Romancing the Dungeon is intended for mature audiences, as this show contains adult themes. But, like, not those kinds of adult themes. Just some sensitive stuff that some audience members may find upsetting. Content warnings for specific episodes can be found in episode descriptions. You're listening to Romancing the Dungeon, a softcore D&D podcast about heroes navigating their daily lives while looking for love in a world full of peril, monsters, and heartbreakers. chamber you found yourself in in the core is just rattling it's shaking there are chunks of it falling away and as you throw yourself out of the oncoming teeth of this huge creature you are also trying to avoid falling debris as each of you uh, twists and turns and leaps and ducks Cloda, you glance just over your shoulder as you see uh, Oshin standing completely stoically against the face of this monstrosity. It all happens so quickly. And as you sort of stumble over your feet, kind of clambering and clasping, you're struggling to find the air, the words, the sound to scream out Oshin's name as you just see the two jaws of this twisted husk and shadow just snap shut over the Furlborg's left side. Oshin, there's a flash of pain. There is just this raw, intense heat that courses through you, and that is followed by this brilliant flash of light. You can just hear Cloda and you hear your name being called, and you feel a hand on your shoulder. And as your eyes begin to adjust and the heat fades, you find yourself standing in the route. There are dozens of people sitting around tables, uh, passing baskets and pots and bowls and plates. There's just a small platoon of little children running around pretending to be Grove Guardians. In the corner, you see a small band kind of setting up a little stage area. There's two Kenku, a wood elf, and a turtle kind of doing a kind of a sound check and setting up a a little mini merch desk uh, at which there's a rather spiky looking Waterganassi woman set there folding t-shirts. You're not certain how long you've been standing here. You can smell food, you can smell uh, spiced apple cider. There is just this warmth just exuding from the, the heart of the root. And there are, there's a lot of good energy and there's a lot of happy faces. And you're, you find your whole body just sort of relax. What do you want to do? Uh, am I in a dream? I think that's like my first thought when I when I see everything around here. I'm like, I'm dreaming 100%. Or maybe I'm dead. Is death just like doing what you were already doing in life? Because that's kind of boring. Okay, I guess. Um, uh, uh, I'll I'll uh, if there's a festival to be to be set up for, I will. That's what I do. That's what I do. I'll just go. I'll just go help. Is there a particular task you want to see yourself doing? Like, do you want to? help uh, pass out food? Do you want to help the band set up? Do you want to uh, do some tidying? Do you want to shepherd some kids? There's there's lots of things that you can busy yourself with. I think he'll go, uh, he'll go shepherd the kids. It, it, in the walking, he's kind of like, in that sort of, he doesn't know what's going on. He's like, look, I'm either dreaming or I'm dead, so I'm going to try to do the thing. There's a real quick second where he jumps, and he's like, can I fly? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> not a dream. Just as you as you kind of like, yeah, it's that thing you you're like, okay, no, this is this is this is weird. Uh you do kind of a little kind of a hop. Uh like just kind of 
from one foot to the other or one foot kind of forward, you kind of bound. And when you do, like you're like, no one saw that, it's fine. And then you just feel a set of eyes just locked on you. And it's the thing you, you, you know you're being watched. And when you turn, you just see Nana Metamoon sitting at a table, like just one eyebrow raised kind of very quizzically at you. And she just mouths, are you all right? It, it just looks over at Nana Meadow Moon. All good. Thumbs up. It just hands in the air, shrugs. Like, feeling a little bit weird. All good. Don't worry about me. Okay. Uh, she she, she kind of gives you kind of one of those, like, grins of, oh, Jesus, he's on the apple cider already. <laughs> um, and uh, she just, she pours some water into a cup and she gestures at it. Um, and she kind of she turns her body kind of away from you. Uh, again, oh, she, she she goes back to orchestrating whatever scene she's at at, at a table full of other Actually, elderly should. folk. Yeah, you find a small platoon of uh, Grove Guardians, all wearing clearly handmade uh, and crafted uh, costumes. They are currently beating up a jack of coats. Like they've all got little wooden swords, a little wooden shield, a little wooden spear. The spear is just basically a broom handle. Oh, whoa oh, there. I think I think you've shown that mound of coats. It was boss. I think, come, come over to me here now. I think we need to... You can't be waving around those weapons like that, lads. You're going to take someone's eye out. Uh, who are you? You're not the passive us. Uh, I think I am. I'm a, I'm a good uh... guardian. <laughs> I've never seen you be a Grove Guardian. Just going to get sassy with them. I've never seen you be a Grove Guardian. Uh, we were just beating up this mound of shadows. Shadow coats. So we oh. did more Grove Guardian than you did right now. Did you know? Yeah, I did. Yeah, and then, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. And, like, yeah, there's, 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 there's this small bunch of, like, little Furbolg and Seder kids, uh, an Earth Ganassi and, and a Wood Elf, all kind of just, like, playing pretend. Uh, he looks at them and says that. Do you want to fight a real shadow demon? And he uses a little cantrip, just a minor illusion to create a little shadow man with just like flailing arms in the corner. And says, "Get him! Get him!" <laughs> so the, the 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 kind of the the mouthy uh, little satyr. Oh, that's a nat one. Uh, <laughs> swings like just swings with their sword. It goes out of his hands, and it's that thing where it just you turn, the kids turn. And in slow motion, you just see the, the sword kind of just flying through the air. And it clops Trep in the back of the head. No, no, it's not heavy or anything. It doesn't, like, it's not going to, like, wound or anything. But it hits Trep uh, in, right in the back of the head, bounces off of him, and lands in a bowl full of uh, tomato punch that then splashes and somehow manages to land on Trep as well. I, I can Ooh, sigh bother. of relief because I fully thought it was going to be Nana Meadow Moon for a second. I was like, okay. Scatter. He just <laughs> sends the kids off running. Oh, the kids are already gone. Like, the, the kids saw that sword flying through the air and abandoned you in a, in like a, in a second. A little bit hurt, a little bit proud. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's how it should be. Go, I just go over to Trep. Hey, man, I'm so sorry. The, the kids were messing. That's okay. At least they don't think I'm still in that pile of coats. Oh, you were in the pile of coats originally? I volunteered to do coat check tonight. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, man. Are you good? Do you need, like, healing or anything that they hurt you? No, I'm good. It's just my pride that's hurt. and That's never healed. Oh, so. uh, I can't heal that with magic. Um, Have a pastry. Just hands a pastry that he stole from, like, one of the tables. Oh, thank I'll you very much. For later. I'll uh, really enjoy this. Okay. Um, have has the river spoken to you yet? Has the uh, no. But my ears are usually full of water from tripping in. So if it did, I wouldn't be able to hear it. Yeah. It's the, the, look, I'm not. I'm not trying to get in into the middle of what you and the river have going on. But uh, they're trying. The, the, there's a lot of. 
there's a lot of chemistry that goes unanswered with the river, and I think y'all just need to talk it out. Okay. Yeah, so leave this community gathering and go talk to the river. No, not not right now. No, you're right. It's urgent. I should no, figure it out. No, it's really not. Just next time you fall. Okay. Probably on my way home tonight. Yeah, probably. Have a, have a good day. I'm gonna go over here. Do the thing I was gonna do without you. Give me a perception check, Oshi. Oh, Jesus. All right. Oh, not 20. Nice. There was something strange with the way this played out for you. Like, you... You rem- like, it, 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 At first, it feels like deja vu. It's one of those things of, well, I thought this was a dream. I thought this wasn't real. And now, as you... As you as you start to talk to Trep and you you talk about the river and you apologize for the the sword hitting him and getting covered in uh, tomato punch, that half happened. It, the sword hit him. He got splashed in punch and you apologize, but this it didn't happen like that. You didn't talked to him about the river, you made your apologies, you handed him a pastry and you left him wander off to clean up and you start to remember it a little bit this, this has happened before, this is this is the eve of the harvest tide and as you kind of look around you start to notice a few of the other details in the room, it's not just the food, it's not just the colours that uh, folks in the grove are wearing to show the turning uh, of the seasons. It's even it's even the band that Tatter hired in. You you remember the name? It was a stupid name. There, it was a cover band called Eternal Boulder. They sang awful sort of indie country rock music, all cover songs from some band that you think Cloda mentioned once. As you sort of piece all this together, it's not the band that was significant, it wasn't the interaction with Trip. You... And it hits you. This is the night that Cloda Metamoon left the grove. Either this is a memory or this is it's not a dream, but it might be something like a dream. It might I might be in a, a sort of mental liminal space where I can where I already have changed things before they uh, th- that from they actually happened. Having realized the importance of the night, I think I'm gonna go try find Cloda as she's leaving. Because if if this is if the, I think what what Oshin is thinking is because what I'm thinking is, if this is the little moment of clarity that I have before I pass on so that I can tie up any loose business, I want to talk to Cloda before she leaves. Give me an investigation check to see if you can find her here in the route. That's an eight. She's not... You you, you look uh, as hard as you can. Like you, and again, it's people are kind of... Uh, are, 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 walking up to you or you know having or stopping you for chats and the entire time you 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 you're, you're scouting the the community hall for her and you you can't see her and you even kind of double check some of the spaces you double check where the band are setting up and kind of sound check over and now kind of getting into the the rhythm of the first song there's no there's no immediate sign of her and as you kind of turn to maybe even just check outside um you double back uh, on yourself and just where you found those kids playing you now find uh oster um, kind of peering out the entrance way up into the night sky uh, uh, all the while reflecting on uh, a book that they are never seen without just sort of skimming through the pages standing next to an untouched table covered in lunar cakes. <laughs> <laughs> Makes about sense. 
Mm. There's a um, really like strong perfumey scent <laughs> going from the table. If this is that sort of like weird liminal space, do I still have the brooch on me? The Grove Guardian's brooch. You look. It's that thing of hang on, like if I'm aware of where I am at, if I'm if I'm aware of this event, uh, and that the not all these things happened the way they happened, you check your person. You don't see the brooch. Right. If that's the case, uh, no way of through magic or divining. Clota's not in the route. I'm just gonna book it. I'm just gonna run. Okay. Running out of the route, and I'm gonna just try go to the the most common like gate or entryway into the grove. If yeah. Aster saw the young boy just running and rushing around, he might just kind of like, "Are you looking for something? You're you look flustered, my child." Uh, uh, just uh, there's someone I need to catch up to. I, I have to go uh, before I before I do go. You're a brilliant man, and I'm glad that you're a part of this community, and he's just going to keep running off. Aster, you... Yeah, sort of sort of unexpected. Um, hmm. You, like... Oshin's always been polite and civil, but that was... It, it's one of those things that feels slightly out of character. Out of, it's just that completely unexpected. Can Aster ascertain the whereabouts of a certain person right now to themselves using their book yes i think i think seeing this strange out of character thing he would follow but at a distance okay ashin as you uh head out and you're making your way towards the the gates uh, at the grove uh, and the guard posts you pass just immediately outside uh, at the riverbank staring down in conversation with the river you see and hear Trep half anchored with some rope like just kind of bound to like it's just a protruding root Fish are looking good today Thumbs up as I keep running like just mouthing You got this buddy You can do it uh, I'm having that chat you told me to have and also washing the uh, tomato <laughs> poop off myself. Trap real quick. Okay, we're we're gonna we're gonna do a we're gonna do a little exercise, okay? You're gonna stand up straight, you're gonna put your shoulders back, you're gonna talk like from, from the bottom of your lungs. I want you to project like you're shouting at me. Okay. And like from floppy ears all the way down to the ground, like watching someone who's slumped with also giant ears like stand erect is like quite a rolling maneuver. Like first <laughs> shoulders, then ears, then all the way up. Beautiful. Is this better? That was better. That was a lot better. You just got to speak with confidence, man. You're great. Keep it up. Okay. I just shake your hand then. But I'm wet, so I wouldn't if I were you. Yeah, that that's fair. I, you know, yeah, yeah. Just keep it up. Thanks, Oshin. Oshin just keeps running. Oshin has... Oshin doesn't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. But if this is a, a liminal space between life and death, then why would they keep anything unsaid? They're going to go to the people that have been there, that were there for him in his last moments, uh, or what at least he regards as his last moments, and he's just going to give them whatever gift or words he can that he would imagine would carry them forward in life. As you bolster Trap with a uh, pep talk and confidence, you there's a there's a strangeness uh, in the moment, Ashin. It's again there is that very very pronounced sense of déjà vu, seen before, heard before, felt before. But as you watch the Harangan sort of stand and hold himself in a way that you never recall seeing him before, there is something different this time. As you hear Trap's voice drift and carry across the river and 
echo between the banks. There's something else. There's another sound. And it is just as familiar. But you never quite made it out. It's 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 that it's that melody that you find yourself humming. This was the night you first started hearing it. This was the night when Clodagh Metamoon left the grove and you started to hear this song. Something propels you to turn and to go back to the gates and to keep looking for Clodagh. Aster, from the entrance into the route, you watch as the young Furball Grove Guardian mentors another past student of yours. And again, while not something he... He, you've seen him speak to soldiers. You've seen him uh, take command of uh, a unit. You see the confidence that Oshin, uh, and you've always seen the confidence that Oshin exudes. But this is different. This feels personal and this feels intimate. You watch as he once again continues towards the gates of the grove. And as you follow, letting him lead, the entire time your fingers sort of trace the pages in front of you. Again, there's a, a wonderful calming energy to that touch, to the, the feel of the paper. You know the constellation just as, as your finger glides across it. You know it as clear as it hangs in the sky above as it is printed on the page that you hold open. You look, you look upwards as you see the Firbolg make their way out of the gate. It's interesting. The constellations, they have a, at times, you have hypothesized, sort of a will of their own. And there's a, there's a divergence here that you've, you've, you've read about, but you've never witnessed. And the Phaetum constellation, it has clustered in the skies above rather unpredictably but that is fate it is forever changing and something feels different and Oshin you you pass through the heavy wooden gates and you find yourself staring north up along the crooked road south into the road beyond the wilds and you have a decision to make north or south do I know anything about what lies beyond the grove beyond just like general roads and forests would I know where the nearest settlement is beyond the beyond the grove some of the merchants that you have encountered in the grove come from Tezreb others come from Galeshire the capital city and that lies further to the east, but both of these two large settlements, both cities can be reached by the Crooked Road. Yeah, and that's the direction, I think. You take a look north, and as your eyes linger, you hear that song again, that, that faint little melody being hummed. And you move as quickly as you can. In the back of my mind, I'm trying to piece together who, if it's that deja vu feeling, I feel like it's also the sort of earwormy thing where I know the tune, but I'm trying to put it and just trying to piece together who or what I know is making that tune. Uh, not thinking about any of the, oh, well, this is around the time when I started to hear the tune either way what other, you know, significant things were going on with me. I think it just laser focus on trying to find Cloda and then in the back of my mind just running through all the different voices of all the different people that I know from the Grove. I uh, just trying to figure out who to whom that tune and to whom that voice belonged to. As you as you sort of scan your memories and it, it, every time you think of it, every time you try to just sort of pull on the sounds different images come to mind. Nana Metamoon down by the river singing to herself. 
a group of kids out in the long field playing, singing the song together. A fisherwoman and her husband reeling in nets. All of these people hum this song. It just seems to be just part of the grove. And just, just as you kind of find yourself even remembering yourself at one stage or another humming away to it, your foot catches on a root and you spill forward and you tumble and you find and you just land into a very deep puddle sitting my sitting my ass on the ground uh just looking up at the canopy of trees above the sound was the sound of the grove itself so it couldn't have belonged to any one person it would just belong to the grove itself and i think at that point looking up just very softly say lilith are you there kind of just looking up and you can just see the shadowy forms of the trees and their branches many of them bare now as autumn sets you sort of scan the night sky and you don't see anyone but then the humming starts to get a little louder and it's coming from all around you i go on come out don't play with me I'm trying to f- i'm kind of busy I think I'm on short time. I'm I'm trying to do an entrance thing. All right, sorry, sorry. (laughs) Do you want me to close my eyes and turn around? Yeah, would would you just, just, like, can we do it from, like, the top again? Just, you ask where I am, and then I'm going to start singing again, and then it's going to be this big, mad reveal. (laughs) All right, all right. Don't look at, don't look at the lake. I'm going to come out of the lake. Okay, okay, I'll turn around, fully back to the lake. Lilith. No, 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 like, more like sort of, like, frightened and scared. Okay, okay. Lilith? Just fake shivering. <laughs> oh, fine, that's gonna have to do. The I'm humming gets girl. A... I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> the, the humming gets a little louder. Even with your back turned to the lake, you... You see a glow of pale light just sort of washing over the trees. And you remember this machine. You remember encountering Lilith here nearly a year ago. But again, that sense of this happened but not like this comes over you. And you just feel Lilith's arms wrap themselves around you uh, in a way that they have done many, many times over the last few weeks and months as the two of you have gotten to know each other and you got to know who and what she is as the Grove's guardian. I, I just kind of hold on to her arms if I can physically feel them there. I would just like, go to grab where I feel that sensation. I just say, hey, um, this is this is going to sound weird because I feel I don't know what's going on right now. Everything's weird. Every, all of this has already happened before and I'm changing it. And I know things now that I shouldn't know at this point in time. Am I dying? The embrace gets a little tighter. You're already dead. Did I do good? Ah, you were all right. Are the others safe? No, they're dead too. It's all your fault. And you're this trapped living. I want away. You're pulling my leg. <laughs> yeah, well, you're very wet and she just pushes off. What are you doing? This is the night that Clota disappears, so I'm going to try to find her so that I can apologize for being mean to her in the future, <laughs> which is an insane thing to say out loud, but yeah, that's the plan right now. Ashin, you're, you're 
You're talking to the embodiment of a spirit that protects a grove that no one else can see. Yeah, fair play. That is the least crazy thing about you right now. <laughs> ah, fair play. Yeah, that's fair. Did you see where she went? I did. Are you gonna tell me? What would you say to her? That I'm sorry for all the anger that I'm gonna hold towards her, or that I did, or... That I don't understand why she left, and I don't think I ever will, but it's not my place to understand it, and holding on to the anger didn't really do me any good. And that in my last moments, I wish I regarded her more as a sister than as someone who just brought problems with them. That that's a regret that I'm that if I'm dead, I'm going to hold through the afterlife until she, in her own time, meets me there and I can apologize again. Lilith regards you for a few moments and she takes a step back and something in her body language shifts a little bit. She'd been kind of holding herself. She she's forever slouching. She's forever sort of like kind of got like that one like kind of like holding herself on one hip and kind of like. Eh. But she actually stands tall. Then you've said it. You've said what you had to say. You can't change this moment, Ashin. You can't stop what's going to happen here. That's not. That's not how destiny works. Then... Then why does destiny demand that I hold hate in my heart for so long? There are forces in the world, Ashin. Things that are... Unchanging. There are times and moments that when we come upon them, they can leave a mark. Sometimes those moments are found in the quietness of a grove. And the wind just kind of rushes through the trees. Sometimes those moments are found in the company and even the arms of someone you hold very close. And the light washes away from her and you see the two forms of young women holding hands just danced through the trees. I think I just say, if you're still there, um, maybe I can't change the past, but can I? I'm not ready for it to be, I'm not ready for it to be my time yet. I'm really not there. There's still so many people left to protect. I, the grove is still in danger, and I, it is my duty to protect it to the death. But I'm gonna add and beyond that because I'm not ready to go yet. So put me back here. I picked you, Hashim, out of all the others because you remind me. So much of myself. So willing to give all of who you are in the name of others. And the light that kind of washed away from her, two young women 
you see them embrace. They kiss. And then their hands go taut as if they're being pulled apart from each other. And one figure is just swallowed in darkness. And the other is left alone. There are some moments that can change who we are. And Lilith is in front of you again. She turns away from you and the long silver and white dress she wears that seems to sort of marry in with her hair just drops a little below her left shoulder and you see a heart wrapped in thorns and she pulls the dress back up again. In the end, it grew so quiet when she was gone. And I waited, and I hoped. Then time came. I found myself here, both body and soul. But my heart was always hers. And when she came, I found a light once again. But she had had moments of her own, moments that changed her, that changed us. But my heart was still hers, and now it's yours. I give you my song, Ushi. I give you my song, and you must give it to Clodagh Metamoon. It is my story and a warning. I'm going now. And you won't see me. Where you are... Is there... another place for you after after you leave? What... What's going to happen to you? This is a moment. And things have changed. Everything just washes in pale moonlight. You are overcome by it. And as it all goes completely white, you see Lilith just utterly absorbed into it. And you can hear voices, people shouting for Cloda, a search party, Patter, the other Grove Guardians. Some even call for you, call your name. And you find yourself looking at the North Road and the South Road. We cut back to the room. All of you watch as... Oshin is lifted off his feet. This giant worm-like creature entombed in husks of shadow and darkness. These skittering legs just crawling and scratching against the rock and the earth, twisting its form, pulling itself out of the earth. Lift him up and just smash him into the roof of the core and the ceiling collapses everybody give me deck saving throws hey um, <laughs> subbing i rip Astrid is still outside the room <laughs> myself and grace were still outside the room at the end if you're still outside you can give it to me uh, you can give me the deck saving throw at advantage Nat 20. Also not 20. Also okay. not 20. <laughs> and it's it's a group check, right? So like those three not 20s have us covered. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, they, they, karmically, yeah, they do. They balance out the whole yeah. thing. 17. Okay. Okay, right. 17 okay, everybody, three not 20s. Everybody passed. So much happens in that moment, Clodagh. As you tumble out of the way and the ceiling collapses, you watch as Oshin is grabbed by this creature and then its whole form just rises upwards. And you watch as 
the Grove Captain of the Grove Guardians is just smashed through the ceiling of the core. Immediately, the ground beneath each of you starts to bubble and crack and broil, and it is just... It also explodes. As you see, more of this creature's body just coils out of the earth, lifting you all up and out. And as you are just dragged, bulldozed, pulverized through the earth, you feel your whole body just awash in light. You feel the earth scraping against you, but it doesn't cut. You feel your body mashing against rocks, but the rocks move. The tree roots, the earth, all of it just sort of rolls and roils away from you, as if the very earth in the grove itself was making a passage safe as you are just hoisted out of this forgotten, lost temple. The wooden flooring of the root and you are just expelled outwards. As it comes crashing down, there are screams and shouts from the grove as the creature's whole frame has emerged from beneath the earth. It is a huge black worm. Its form, its skin, just sort of shielded in shadows and darkness that act like a husk or some sort of shell. Its whole frame is carried by thousands of legs that look like crooked bent daggers that squirm and scratch. Its face is just this opened maw of teeth that drip this pungent green ooze. As each of you finds your footing, as you find yourselves sort of looking and gasping and breathing and just searching for for something, for each other, for, for a sign, you hear Patter's voice just shout out, Clear! Run! Escape! Uh, Retreat! Uh, As, like, all of the Grove Guardians who had kind of begun to assemble themselves are just on the fringes of this and immediately kind of spears uh, and and long swords in hand go into a a sort of a ready hold and Patter just lets out a sharp whistle and you see each of them lunge and swipe at the creature. As they do, their swords bounce off its hide and its body just sort of coils and snaps and it just lunges just a huge chunk of itself at them. Five of the guardians are just crashed and crushed against a wall uh, as this worm-like creature just lets out this hideous roar. Uh, sending mucus and bile spraying up. Your ears split from the screaming cry. As you search and look, you don't see Ushin anymore. Cloda is like absolutely like panic stations because she's just seen like some of her, I'm assuming, friends smushed against a wall. Her brother is missing. Her dad is in grave peril. And she's just like, what the fuck? So... Um, she's just gonna shout for Oshin and then look to the others and just be like, can anybody see him? Can I see him? Everyone give me perception checks. Mm-hmm. I'm at disadvantage. Oh Jesus, that's a nat one. That's easy. Natural 20. <laughs> nat 20. Yeah. We need to save these yeah. nat 20. Please use them all fight. now, so that when we get into <laughs> combat, I may actually have some fun. Coda, Grace, and Trep, uh, you are scanning what is the runes of the, the hall here in the root, looking for Ushin. He was in the creature's mouth when, when you saw him below in the core. You don't see him anywhere. Grace and Trep, you can hear something. Amidst the screeching of this this creature, this, this monstrous form, and the noise 
and chaos that spews out of its mouth. You can hear a song, you can hear a melody, you can hear something being hummed. Aster, you hear Clodagh call out, but immediately your person, you go to your codex. You go, I can use that, I can, I can find that, and it's not at your hip. Oh. You, as, as you reach down for where it normally is chained to a belt, you see the chain snapped. And at your feet, the codex, generations of maps, charts, predictions and patterns are scattered. Some torn, some buried, all around you lay destroyed pages. Sure, just kind of falls to the ground like I, I guess this is a good reason that he got a nat one on his perception <laughs> check for Ushin because he is busy scrambling through some of the notes. I think he par- partially in his mind he's just like, well now Ambrose has a lot of work to do. Um but he scrambles and he looks for one page in particular. He looks for his pages on the Fatum constellation just to hold on to that particular one. And that's it. Give me, give me an investigation check. Grace, Trep, and Clodagh, what are you doing? Grace is going to have a quick, quick scan around for any, I suppose, any civvies kind of caught in any of this. So, but I will be scanning as I try and run towards that sound because it seems so at odds with what's happening who would be singing and for why. So they're going to just book it, not thinking really, but as they do so, they're just going to like shout out to the rest of the party. We need to get these people out of here. As you're trying to make sense of the battlefield, Grace, uh, and one of your strengths has always lay in analyzing a situation. And there is a clarity on you now, one that has not been there for months. You get a sense of the lay of the land, and this creature, this this monster, erupted from the centre of the root here. It has done so in a way that it is occupying three quarters of the room. Mm -hmm. The entrance is partially blocked by it. Mm -hmm. What hasn't been, what, what its form isn't blocking is buried in debris. As you run and you are kind of trying to make as much of a... Uh, you're trying to get in as much of the scene in front of you. You only... There's only one person you see in the middle of all this, and they are currently trying to ready themselves that is not prepared for combat. It's Pater Metamoon, and he's desperately trying to put on uh, some hide armor, and there is a... A, a, like a spear down at his left foot, his hand just hovering over it. Seeing this and just kind of seeing the hesitation and knowing that any sort of hesitation right now could mean death for countless people. Is Grace going to be passing by Pater, yeah? If that's yeah. what you want to do, you could divert what you were doing and go to him. Okay, so Grace is going to kind of worm their, worm their way through. Uh, Grace is going to kind of like <laughs> weave their way through the kind of debris that's kind of all around. And as they're getting close to Pater, I'm going to intentionally try and make eye contact with him because of, like, we would have seen him down below trying to scrape at all of the rotting root. And mm-hmm. I'm just going to say, leave that and get the people out. His eyes kind of lock on, on you, Brace. And... You do, you, you see uh, immediately in his expression just a panic. Like there, there was shock and fear below uh, where he had led the group into what he thought was the, he believed was the central core of the route. Give me an insight check. Mm-hmm. That was a 16. You can see kind of about him as much as he is struggling to ready himself. Uh, and and it's, it's to ready the, the armor more than anything else. There is something in the way he's holding himself that tells you he's not unprepared to fight. He's not unprepared to sacrifice himself, to die, to protect this place. And as you, as you draw closer to him, kind of weaving in between 
the erupted floor and the just the debris kind of lying about the place and some of the overturned tables and such you you see that he is sort of haunched down like he's kind of pulling the the armor over himself spear down by his left foot his left hand hovering over it but the way he's sort of holding himself he's he's in a protective position he's protecting something trep what are you doing do I recognize the song? Give me a wisdom... Yeah, just give me a wisdom check. 19. It's one of those things that when you hear it sort of almost smothering the sound of this creature's screech, it felt familiar. And as you sort of uh, drown out everything else around you. Uh, Grace shouting to clear the the hall of uh, everybody. The sound of uh, people roaring and screaming, things falling and crashing. You're, you're drowning all of it out. It sounds so familiar because you've heard it every day. You've heard this song every single day you have been in the grove. I presume this disgusting, roiling uh, creature doesn't have like three or four glowing red bits that seem obviously the first bits to take off. Uh, so no, failing, uh, nothing, uh, yeah. nothing immediately, no. No, not a tail or anything that you need. No, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I want to find Oshin, um, but my assumption from hearing the song and the last place I saw Oshin was this thing's mouth. So using the song and the rhythm of it, like some sort of rhythm-based jumping game, I'm going to try make my way up the top of this. Like, I'm trying to, like, if it's coiled up, like, monk my way up to the top. If I can pick up, like, a, something sharper than my walking stick on the way there, that would be great, but no worries if I can. Give me an... So, if you want to... If you want to look for a weapon, that's that's going to be a whole look for a weapon, look for something. There's there's bits of debris, like there's bits of broken timber and stuff that, that you could pick up. Not debris. But if <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you have a decision, Trep. You can scout for uh, a weapon and kind of hop over uh, the creature to try and get to maybe where some of the other uh, Grove Guardians were readying themselves before they got splatted. Or you can try climb this thing. Yeah, I'll try climb it with my walking stick. Give me an athletics check then, please. And then, Cloda, what are you doing? Um, I have a question, because I only now just remember it. Is Copper still bounding around? You don't see him. Great. Uh, in that case, she is going to protect the family that she can see and cast Sanctuary on her dad. It's that thing, Cloda, with, with no sign of Ushing. And seeing the others sort of, in Trep's case, literally jump into action. You see your father and you see Grace kind of reaching out to him. And immediately, by instinct almost, you conjure a song. You conjure the, 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 the feelings. And you find it sort of catching. Even as, as the note trembles inside you, as you find your voice shaking, it joins the medley of the creature's screech, and that song that is now growing louder here in the root. And the magic washes over Patter as you cast Sanctuary. What did you get on your athletics check, Trep? 19. 19. Aster, what did you get on your investigation check? Oh, 14. On a 19, Trep, you leap up onto one of the tables that still standing. You see this worm, it, its whole body sort of rolling and then twisting and as it sort of uh, flicks towards you uh, it crashes through the table and you leap up onto it and just as you come to land you you find your footing as you as a foot touches this creature you feel so frightened you feel so alone you feel so angry and you find your body just curling you feel yourself sort of wincing 
and just retreating almost into like kind of a, a fetal curl, that sort of, if I get low and I get small, then the world can't see me. And then you hear the river and you feel Oshin's hand on your back and those words stand tall and you feel as your feet sink into the wet bank and your shoulders roll back and your ears roll back those feelings the hurt, the anger they're okay they are real but they are not all that you are and you leap up off the creature and this first coil and you spring up onto a portion that feels like you're getting closer to his neck and as it sort of its head roils backwards you land up on, on what would be its brow just over the just this open crust that is its upper lip and just hanging there one hand holding on dangling you see Oshin he is singing and the melody echoes out of him Aster your hand as you scramble for the pages and you can hear Cloda's voice and you can feel the magic just washing off of her and you can you hear Grace screaming for people to get out to retreat your hand finds four pages you pick up Dolus Interitus Amantes and Phaeton four constellations on two pages. Dolus, Interitus, Amantes, and Phaetum, the Fate constellation. Two are yours, two are Ambrose's. They are freshly inked. And in your haste, and in your exhaustion, the work muddied and the constellations and their readings weren't so clear. Dolus, the trick constellation. Interitus, destruction. An ill omen. Amantes, the lovers. And Fatum, fate. Your mind just sort of scanning and sketching and tracing and drawing these patterns. Kicking yourself. You should have seen this even with the nature of these constellations, even with the nature of the obfuscation in Dolus, Phaetum being a difficult constellation to truly map, all of these signs pointed to this moment. And your hand scans the other two pages. Both weathered. Both old. Older than the Codex. You don't remember these. The page and the paper feel different to touch. You unfurl the first. And inside, hastily scratched, you see a short note. Aster, our son, our time is short. Find new roots. We will always share the sky. Love, mother and father. And you've had the Codex longer than you can remember, and you never found these pages. These were, you know that Codex, like you know the path from your house to the root second nature to you. It was hidden. It was fate. 
and your hand finds the second page. Give me an arcana check. Two of my best rolls that I've seen. Uh, that's going to be a 21 with disadvantage. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> nice. God damn. Yeah. Yeah. I got a 14 and a 19 and I have a plus 7 to Arcana. So. Amaze. So, Love that. Sorry, I was like, I'm really glad you gave me a second there because uh, I was like about to cry. No, <laughs> my goodness. That was a good cry. Here. Good, good. As, as you, I mean, your, your eyes are still locked on the first and as you pluck the, the other page up from the ground, immediately your fingers feel the magic. Before this campaign began, before this little adventure, Dai, I asked you to roll uh, a d40 or a d10 you did. and a d4. And I asked you to then combine those two to give me a, a result of 1 to 14. I can now reveal to you that this was something that I put into fate. And you unfurl the page and your eyes drift from the note from your parents. People you had considered, but never really dwelt on because you've had family here for as long as you've been here. There were always questions and there was always wonders. Your hand opening the fourth page. Your eyes drift, the incantation and the incredibly powerful energy that just radiates from the words as you cast mass heal oh nice. wow <laughs> and for an argument's sake i am going to go one step further with this spell it will remove exhaustion yes and it is the equivalent of a short rest that amazing i'm going to drop my exhaustion and everybody, yeah, I said, eh, question, the people who were crushed against the wall, were they like yeah. smeared dead or were they kind of like smashed or some of them like maybe like at death's door, I guess. Yes. Or maybe... Yeah. So they're not, none of, none of them, like we're not, we're not doing a full on like attack on Titan on this. Like, yeah. yeah. They, be, oh. they become mash. Aster yeah. immediately thinks of them first. We'll use as much of the 700 as possible to get them on their feet with like enough HP that they can like get out of here maybe 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 like 15 to 20 and then we'll heal everybody else that he can see around including Oshin if he can see Oshin now dangling from the yeah, creature yeah right now Oshin is being pulled I assume out of the creature's mouth question yes would Grace be able to do a monster knowledge check on this heart eater thingy give me an history check Oh, dirty motherfucking 20. Okay. From here, uh, and, and you, you, Patter's okay. You can see he's okay. And you see that he is sort of, he has managed to tie the kind of the chest armor on. Haphazard as it is, it fits and it sits on him. You're not quite sure what he's protecting. He's sort of hovering and he's, you see it a little bit clearly as he bends down for the spear. But there is a small bag uh, next to his foot. It looks wet. His eyes uh, kind of look up at the creature and you see what he's looking at as you see Trep, the Harangan, pulling Oshin, that the captain of the Grove Guardians, out of its mouth. And from where you are kind of looking up at it, you can see this thing in more of its unnatural, unholy state. And it's that thing where you start going, going through the index of creatures that you have encountered and you've never encountered anything like this. You've encountered giant worms before you've, enc you've encountered huge um slugs and gelatinous creatures um you've even read of large dragons uh, that are so heavy in themselves that they they end up slithering uh, more so than than walking or crawling and have the inability to fly but it's it's not immediately coming to you uh, as you kind of look at it and just as you, as you kind of ready to kind of attack, there's a faint recollection. And you can hear Thane. He's rummaging through a pile of books. You're in that pawnbroker shop that he liked to visit. There's a shade of high elf there. A young, brawny girl. 
short pink hair. She's incredibly quiet. Incredibly small for her stature. And she sort of drifts into the background as Thane points at a page and you just kind of hear it. <laughs> Could you imagine fighting that thing? And you see this huge monstrosity. It looks like this worm. You see that it has no eyes. It has just this huge beak-like mouth that hides a nest of razor-sharp teeth. He's kind of flicking through the pages back and forth, and you can, you can make out some details. It is an ancient creature, mythological. It is inherently evil. It is known as a heart eater. You don't know anything else about it. Okay. I need everyone to roll initiative. Heart eater has a 22, which is a natural 20 plus 2. Cloda was 22. I got 21. 12. Yeah. 11. 8. Hatter and the Grove Guardians all got a 4. And we are going to take them in that order, just in terms of the yeah. initiative checks. Uh, and on that, then, the Heart Eater is going to use Heart Shriek. Uh, and Oof. I'm going to need everyone to give me a Wisdom Saving Throw, DC 18. What? Ooh. I knew there would. I got it in a natural 20. Oh my god. <laughs> <gasps> I love this dice. 7. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a bitch. I got I've a had a day, out. okay? <laughs> Declan, I'm so sorry for the shriek that came out of me there. Apologies <laughs> to your eardrums. I got a 27. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Aster got a 27. Coda got a natural 20. Grace? I got a 17. Oh. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. Me too. Oh, I, have no. a minus, I have a minus one wisdom. I rolled an 18. Trep, Oshin, and Grace take 28 necrotic damage. Good lord. Uh, Ooh, guess who oh, has wait, resistance? Wait, wait. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Aster and Cloda both take 14 necrotic damage. Okay. Trep, Grace, and Oshin, having failed the saving throws, are frightened of the creature for a minute. You can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your turns. Frightened of the creature, yeah? Um, creature oh. also can be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. Yeah. She okay. Can't be then, okay. Then you're not frightened, which would make sense for Grace. You know. Yeah. Her, She's a badass her. bitch. I'm so okay. happy I'm remembering my shit. I used uh, it. <laughs> Cloda, it is your free action. For the, for the record, these are just the free actions. We yeah. Have. yeah. I know. I'm terrified of its actual fucking turn. Okay. So Cloda is going to cast a guiding bolt. Sick. Twenty-two. I don't know about you, but I think that hits. No. <laughs> but a feeling to actually Sorry. fuck off fuck Don't off <laughs> it hits it hits <laughs> 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 you Declan, it. please <laughs> I love that <laughs> okay let me just roll my 66 another four so that's 21 Clodagh you watch as the maw of this creature just opens wider and what you thought were two beaks split again and there are four and as these recoil back and just the whole root just reverberates as its scream just shrieks, uh, all of you immediately kind of find yourself wincing, kind of covering your ears with your arms, uh, your hands, uh, anything you can do to try and block the sound of this awful, awful scratching, screeching, painful, lamenting woe from the heart ear. Finding, finding your way through the noise of it, you hold a hand up, gripping the copper rabbit. You watch as it glows, and the magic just wafts off of you as it light coalesces, sharpens, focuses, and just shoots straight at the heart eater, striking it into the side of its head. And you see it knock into the stairwell somewhat. You can see where the guiding bolt hit part of the husk that protects it has cracked this thing is not as invulnerable as it first appeared grace your free action i am going to because i don't have anything else but to attack so i'm going to attack with 
Because I have two swords at the moment. Oh, you fucking beaut. Okay, that was mm-hmm. another 20. Okay, 26 to hit. Yeah, I got in that 20. And that's so, a 26 to hit. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, so if you roll the damage. Mm-hmm. 16. Grace, seeing that now is the the opportunity to, to strike back against this thing uh, and with little time, you, leaving Patter standing, you rush at it. And it's only a couple of steps before you are in front of this creature, like that you are within arm's reach of it. And emanating from it is just this cold, familiar aura. It reeks of the same essence and energy that the Grey Lady wears like a cape. And you, drawing the blade up, just bury it as hard as you can. And you feel it connect against the hardened shell of this creature's skin and just drive it forward. And it cracks and the blade slices through. You pull back and the creature lets out a a scream as you strike it. We're now in full initiative. And I have to roll a d6 because my ability is on recharge. That is a six. That is good to know. Uh, Damn it. Mm, I don't like that. I don't. As the the Heart Eater recoils from Grace's attack, its head sort of spinning backwards, like just the pain of throwing its full weight back. You feel the air in the room just get colder as it draws in a breath. And out of its mouth just comes this broiling dark fog that spills down over it. You've been listening to Grovers in the Heart with Eilish, Tendai, Ben, Dahi and Apollo. I'm Jacqueline and I'm your Dungeon Master. Penultimate episode and we are... Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you to see the heart eater in action and obviously the players fighting it uh but mostly mostly for the hideous monster creature um this i I keep saying this but uh getting to edit this back and listen to uh the players responses and the way they develop the characters has just been a blast for me it's actually almost a year since we sat down to record all these a little a little under that but it's just yeah it, to get to, to get to relieve all this again has been fantastic and as we head to the finale i do want to just uh pay tribute thanks i don't know i don't know the right word for this but uh just i'm absolutely grateful that the the gang gave their time uh to bring the story to life uh before i head off don't forget to check us out on social media at d8 dungeon across all major platforms you can head over to twitch.tv forward slash d8 dungeon uh, to check out some of our live streams every other week and uh, why not give us a follow over on our discord you might have heard in the last episode i mentioned d8 dungeon drive that's just around the corner and uh you can get more information on that on those socials uh until next week um i'm gonna leave it there not next week two weeks time my bad sorry if if ever anybody does want to kind of i just need two seconds to go over there (laughs) and be off camera for like a split second (laughs) or Alternatively, if it's a case of Declan, will you shut the fuck up? Uh, like, I'm not able. Uh, I'm no. also very happy to be told. Uh, like, Please. leave it alone. Honestly, uh, the second to roll some dice and like engage in game mechanics is always usually enough for me to pull mm. back and, and, okay. and yeah. have a moment. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for checking.